Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> we're outside again. Seems like 10,000 years or more since we were outside. Yeah. Reading. Because it's so <coughs> cold lately, but today is sort of alright. Well, you said it's been windy. Oh, it was Windy Williams, definitely. Windy Williams. When I was running, I was like, yeah, it wasn't good. Okay. It's not working, anyway. So, where are we reading from? Uh, Russell Square Park. <laughs> We're in Canto 3, Chapter 21, Text 17. Canto, the chapter is entitled? Conversation between Manu and Kardama. Conversation between Manu and Kardama. What's Why the canto called? Canto 3. Creation. Is it creation? No, that's canto 1. What's the title of the third canto? Status quo. Oh, okay. Status. They were a good group, you know. Oh, God. <laughs> Some of you may know that. <laughs> oh. Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Alright, text 17 hmm. However, persons who have given up stereotyped worldly affairs and the beastly followers of these affairs and who have taken shelter of the umbrella of your lotus feet by drinking the intoxicating nectar of your qualities and activities in discussions with one another can be freed from the primary necessities of the material body. That's an awesome verse, man. Oh, oh. After describing the necessity of married life, Cardinal Muni asserts that marriage and other social affairs are stereotype regulations for persons who are addicted to material sense enjoyment. The principle of animal life, eating, sleeping, mating and defending, are actually necessities of the body. But those who engage in transcendental Krishna consciousness, giving up all the stereotype activities of this material world, are freed from social conventions. Conditioned souls are under the spell of material energy or eternal time, past, present and future. But as soon as one engages in Krishna consciousness, he transcends the limits of past and present and becomes situated in the eternal activities of the soul. One has to act in terms of the Vedic injunctions in order to enjoy material life. But those who have taken to the devotional service of the Lord are not afraid of the regulations of this material world. Such devotees do not care for the conventions of material activities. They boldly take to that shelter which is like an umbrella against the sun of repeated birth and death. Hmm. Constant transmigration of the soul from one body to another is the cause of suffering in material existence. This conditional life and material existence is called samsara, which reminds me sometimes when you mention my website, you say samsara services instead of samskara services. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Should we say it? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> One may perform good work. One may perform good work and take his birth in a very nice material condition, but the process under which birth and death take place is like a terrible fire. Sri Vishwana Chakravati Thakur, in his prayer to the spiritual master, has described this. Samsara, or the repetition of birth and death, is compared to a forest fire. A forest fire takes place automatically without anyone's endeavor by friction, a forest fire takes place automatically without anyone's endeavor by friction or dried wood and no fire department or sympathetic person can extinguish it. The raging forest fire can be extinguished only when there is a constant downpour of water from a cloud. The cloud is compared to the mercy of the spiritual master. 
By the grace of the spiritual master, the cloud of the mercy of the personality of Godhead is brought in, and then only when the rains of Krishna consciousness fall can the fire of material existence be extinguished. This is also explained here. In order to find freedom from the stereotyped condition, conditional life of material existence, one has to take shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord. <clears throat> not in the manner in which the impersonalists indulge, but in devotional service. Chanting and hearing of the activities of the Lord, sorry, chanting and hearing of the activities of the Lord. Only then can one be freed from the actions and reactions of material existence. It is recommended here that one should give up the conditional life of this material world and the association of so-called civilized human beings who are simply following, in a polished way, the same stereotype principles of eating, sleeping, defending, and mating. Chanting and hearing of the glories of the Lord is described here as Twad Guna Vada Siddhu. Only by drinking the nectar of chanting and hearing the pastimes of the Lord can one forget the intoxication of material existence. That's so nice. Mm -hmm. We've got to become distracted by Krishna. I was thinking that yesterday because I was a little down to stuff. <coughs> and then I got um, <coughs> in the evening and I ended up getting involved in some the service. But something. And it was interesting because at the end of it, I felt really good. And then I had to remind myself, now you feel down. What's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then um yeah i just thought you know sometimes you need that reminder that yeah you just need to not dwell on stuff and just folk, you know get become yeah distracted by project services devotees people you know like in a way that takes you away from the dwelling of stuff like that makes sense <laughs> Positive engagement. Yes. Uh, idle minds, the devil's workshop. Like that. Yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> keep positively engaged, be positive and Yeah. yeah. It's not really much use in being negative. Doesn't really do much for you anyway. For us, anyway, anyone. Yeah. But we like it, somehow we get some pleasure out of it. Okay, next verse. Text 18. Your wheel, which has three knaves, rotates around the axes of the imperishable Brahman. It has 13 spokes, 360 joints, six rims and numberless leaves carved upon it. Though its revolution cut short the lifespan of the entire creation, this wheel of tremendous velocity cannot touch the lifespan of the devotees of the Lord. Wow, so much detail. Yeah, but it's hopefully it will explain all the different I think it details will. and points. So, Corporate, the time factor cannot affect the span of life of the devotees. Important point. In Bhagavad Gita, it is stated that a little execution. This frisbee's going to hit us, isn't it? Well, I hope so. There's some people playing a frisbee, two of them at the same time. <laughs> In Bhagavad Gita, it is stated that a little execution of devotional service saves one from the greatest danger. The greatest danger is transmigration of the soul from one body to another, and only devotional service to the Lord can stop this process. Mm. It is stated in the Vedic literatures, Harim Vina Na Sritim Taranti. Without the mercy of the Lord, one cannot stop the cycle of birth and death. In Bhagavad Gita, it is stated that only by understanding the transcendental nature of the Lord and his activities, his appearance and disappearance, can one stop the cycle of death and go back to him. The time factor is divided into many fractions of moments, hours, months, years, periods, seasons, etc. All the divisions in this verse are determined according to the astronomical calculations of Vedic literature. Mm, here we go. 
there are six seasons called Ritus and there is a period of four months called Chaturmas. Three periods of four months complete one year. According to Vedic astro astronomical calculations, there are 13 months. Hmm. Yeah, basically, the lunar cycle is 13. The 13th month is called Adimas or Malamas. Uh, okay. like and that, is yeah. added every third <coughs> year. The time factor, however, cannot touch the lifespan of the devotees. In another verse, it is stated that when the sun rises and sets, it takes away the life of all living entities. But it cannot take away the life of those who are engaged in devotional service. Time is compared here to a big wheel which has 360 joints, six rims in the shape of seasons and numberless leaves in the shape of moments. It rotates on the eternal existence Brahman. So yeah, I think the 360 joints or days mm -hmm. like that and then the six rims and the six seasons, seasons and the 13 uh, spokes of it. <coughs> and the numberless leaves in the shape of moments, the numberless moments in, a, in life. Yeah, just in one year because that's the comparison is to one year. Okay, yeah. So how many moments in a year? How many moments? Well, this is a moment. It is. Let's enjoy it. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, so, so many moments, moment to moment to moment to moment. This is in one day, so many moments. Anyway, so the main, main point though is that um, time does not have an adverse effect on a devotee. Why is that? Because time is diminishing the lifespan and deteriorating the kind of principles for enjoyment in the material world for people whereas for a devotee because they use their time hearing about Krishna and engaging in devotional service which is eternal they're absorbed in the eternal so therefore they're not absorbed in the temporary they're absorbed in the eternal so they're not functioning on the temporary platform so they're not being affected in the same way so right now, as you're sitting here listening to the Bhagavatam, then you're absorbed in the eternal. So right now, is this moment is just perfect. It's not lost in any way. There's no loss or diminution as they have bikram and nashusti. Pratyavayu and vidyate, as the Bhagavad Gita explains. So mm. does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whereas everyone else is spending all their moments absorbed in the temporary, so they feel lost, or they feel upset, or they feel this, or happiness, distress, pain. But devotees are just completely absorbed in the eternal. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Text 19. My dear Lord, you alone create the universes. O personality of Godhead, desiring to create these universes, you create them, maintain them, and again, wind them up by your own energies, which are under the control of your second energy called Yoga Maya. Just as a spider, I thought I was going to say that, creates a cobweb by its own energy and again winds it up. Now this analogy is used in the Bhagavatam a lot and I guess, I mean I've never really seen, I have seen a spider kind of spinning a web, but I've never seen it wind it up. like kind of suck it back up into itself or like let me take down the web and move it over here you know I try to avoid looking at spiders so I don't really <coughs> yeah anyway it's an interesting point I wonder if scientifically if spiders do actually as the Bhagavatam is saying wind up their wind up their their webs hey if any uh, any scientists out there or anybody who knows if this is a fact you know, yes put in the comments please put it in the comments Purport. Don't put any pictures, mind you. <laughs> put pictures. No, don't. In the verse, in this verse, two important words nullify the impersonalist theory that everything is God. Here, Kardama says, O personality of Godhead, you are alone. 
but you have various energies. The example of the spider is very significant also. The spider is an individual living entity and by its energy it creates a cobweb and plays on it. And whenever it likes, it winds up the cobweb, thus ending the play. When the cobweb is manufactured by the saliva of the spider, the spider does not become impersonal. I'm going to have to Google this later. It's going to be... We're going to do it like with both of us so no, she gets not. to see what spider I, I does. I have no interest whatsoever it's like in this part of God's creation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <coughs> when the cobweb is manufactured by the saliva of the spider, the spider does not become impersonal. Similarly, the creation and manifestation of the material or spiritual energy does not render the creator impersonal. Here the very prayer suggests that God is sentient and can hear the prayers and fulfill the desires of the devotee. Therefore, he is Satchit Ananda Vigraha, the form of bliss, knowledge, and eternity. Hmm. There you go, there you have it, mate. Text 20. My dear Lord, although it is not your desire, you manifest this creation of gross and subtle elements just for our sensual satisfaction. Let your causeless mercy be upon us, for you have appeared before us in your eternal form, adorned with a splendid wreath of tulasi leaves. Mm. Nice. These are some nice verses, huh? Mm. Very, very sweet. Sometimes um, Landanishwara has tulasi garland. Mm. Sometimes. He has tulasi on his ankles, like ankle on garland. His feet. No, mm. but ankle garland, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Um, poor, poor. It is clearly stated here that the material world is not created by the personal will of the Supreme Lord. It is created by his external energy because the living entities want to enjoy it. This material world is not created for those who do not want to enjoy sense gratification, who constantly remain in transcendental loving service and who are eternally Krishna conscious. For them the spiritual world is eternally existing and they enjoy there. Elsewhere in the Srimad Bhagavatam, it is stated that for those who have taken shelter of the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, this material world is useless. Because this material world is full of danger every step. It is not meant for the devotees, but for living entities who want to lord it over the material energy at their own risk. Krishna is so kind that he allows the sense-enjoying living entities a separate world created by him to enjoy as they like. Yet at the same time he appears in his personal form. The Lord unwillingly creates this material world, but he descends in his personal form or sends one of his reliable sons or a servant or a reliable author like Vyasadev to give instructions. He himself also instructs in his speeches of Bhagavad Gita. This propaganda work goes on side by side with the creation to convince some misguided living entities who are rotting in this material world to come back to him and surrender unto him. Therefore the last instruction of Bhagavad Gita is this, give up all your manufacture and engagements in the material world and just surrender unto me. I shall protect you from all sinful reactions. Mm. Hmm. Thoughts? This is this material world is not created for those who do not want to enjoy sense gratification. This material world is not created for those who do not want to. Yeah, it's kind of a weird sentence. I, I had to <laughs> read it again myself. It's like, why would you write it like that? But yeah, he do not want to. It's not created for those who do not want to. You could easily say it's created for those who want to. Right. It's yeah. like a double negative. Mm -hmm. I'm sure in English language it's... But, nevertheless, it's not like that's such a big deal, but it's, um... Yeah, this world isn't, this world isn't created for the devotees. Yeah. Yes. No, wait a minute, because I said this world is created for those who want to... But that's not correct either. It's not created. Oh, that's weird. It's not created for those who don't want to. Who don't want sense creation. Yeah, so the world is created for those who 
want sense gratification. Yes. That's what it means. Yes, 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 yes. So yes. you can't complain. That's the point. Because you wanted it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cut your cake, mate. Eat it. Yeah, like Boris Johnson. Um, <laughs> okay. All right, everyone, we're going to go now. Bye. See you Hare later. Krishna. Hare Krishna.